This video will contain spoilers for Pixar's Luca. Hello guys, it is Gate of Theories here, and guys, I have been obsessed with Luca ever since it came out. I got up bright and early to watch it on its release date, and since then, I've just had so many thoughts as to how this film adds so much to the ever-expanding Pixar universe. So, I thought today we'd take a further dive into that, and look no further than the Pixar theory itself, and see just how much Luca adds to this long-standing theory. And, might I say, it is huge. But before we go any further, please make sure that you've clicked that red subscribe button down below and have your notifications turned on so that you get notified every time we make any brand new Pixar videos. And now, let's find out how Luca fits into the Pixar theory. Now, there's two ways we can look at how Luca fits into the Pixar theory. It's more wider way of how it fully affects the whole theory, and just its quite literal place in time on the Pixar timeline. Let's deal with the timeline first. Luca takes place in 1950s Italy, which is just before films such as The Incredibles and Toy Story, and it's just at the beginning of the three main powers of the Pixar universe beginning to develop. That is, humans, machines, and animals. We see humans developing throughout basically all of the Pixar our films set in modern day. In The Incredibles is when we first see the rise in machines with AI technology first invented by Syndrome to rise up against the supers and destroy them all with the Omni Droid being the first bit of technology. And we basically just see animals gradually develop with movies such as Ratatouille where it shows off Remy's incredible cooking talents. But we've never really been giving a starting point for when animals begin to develop in this Pixar universe. All we've ever really had is just animals develop through the basic acts of survival, such as in The Good Dinosaur, and then we suddenly jump to films such as Up and Finding Nemo, where animals are really quite developed. That is, until now, where Luca might give us some explanation as to when the animals begin developing. The beginning of Luca with the animation and story just gave me so much Finding Nemo vibes and that's not just because they're both set underwater. But the difference between these two films is that you can see the animals in Luca aren't really that much developed, whereas in Finding Nemo they pretty much are. We have Luca, a sea monster who does very basic tasks such as herding fish like sheep, showing the animals, especially under the sea, aren't very developed as they're doing tasks such as farming. This therefore shows that Luca is the starting point in the Pixar theory for where animals finally begin to develop and gradually evolve like the humans and machines begin doing at this time as well. If we go back to Finding Nemo, in the timeline it takes place in the year it was created, 2003. From this, we can now finally see the rate at which animals begin developing, and it is very quick, as by Finding Nemo, we have the fish literally living in a fish society with schools and more, and on land, we have animals with much higher intelligence in films such as Up and A Bug's Life, with animals such as Charles Munt's dogs who can literally fly planes. And this is only around 50 years after Luca has taken place, which just gives a sense as to how quickly and how much the animals have developed over the past 50 years in the Pixar universe. Now, that's literally where Luca takes place in the Pixar theory, but to further explore on a grander scale how Luca changes the Pixar theory drastically, we have to look at what Luca is. A sea monster. We need to know where and how these sea monsters came to be in 1950s Italy, but luckily, Pixar has us covered with one of their most successful film franchises, Monsters Inc. and Monsters University, and technically now Monsters at Work if we're classing the brand new Disney Plus show that's going to be coming out soon. The Pixar theory is all about human memory, with the person who ties the whole theory together being Boo from Monsters Inc. When Boo grows up, she uses the door technology from Monsters Inc. and travels back to medieval Scotland where she becomes the witch from Brave, showing she's there at the beginning of the timeline and at the end. But let's look further into this door technology. We know the monsters created the doors to go back in time to gain human child scream energy to power the city of Monstropolis. Well, technically they're just getting human energy as later they find out laughter works better than scream. However, while using this technology, the monsters have to be extremely cautious as they are incredibly scared of children, and that's why scaring is seen as an essential but dangerous job. They believe a single touch could kill you. 
That's why they have agencies such as the CDA, and why they go to such drastic measures to make sure no human contaminants get into the monster world. It's also why Sully and Mike are so scared and so shocked by Boo, as to why she can't seem to hurt them as they've been brought up to think that all humans, especially human children, are toxic. However, we've never really been given a true answer as to why the monsters are so scared of human children in the first place, and as we've seen from Boo, they've never been toxic or harmful at all, so where on earth has this myth came from? The original reason for why the monsters were scared of children has always been that children must have provoked the monsters to create their fear. I mean, they are travelling back in time to the time of supers, with kids like Jack-Jack around who can literally turn into a monster. No wonder they're scared. However, I've never really been set on that theory as in Boo's room we see there's a Jesse doll, suggesting the doors have gone back in time to around the 50s, which is when the supers would have been around. And these monsters have been travelling back in time for at least several generations just because of how advanced their technology is, so clearly they would have started going back in time much earlier in human history. History. If we say that the time in Monstropolis runs parallel to the human world, that would mean that the monsters would have had to originally begin scream testing generations back before the 1950s and before Luca and the Incredibles even take place. So if it isn't the supers that made the monsters scared of humans, where does this fear come from? Well, that's where Luca comes in. We know that Luca is a sea monster, but we have no clue where that species comes from. The only source of other monsters we ever see in this universe is in Monsters Inc. Does that mean that these monsters came through the doors and travelled back in time? Most likely. I reckon when the monsters first started harnessing scream energy and first started creating the doors that could travel back in time, they needed to see whether humans were safe or not and could be a viable source of power. So they sent sea monsters that could easily escape humans if necessary by simply swimming. But they also sent sea monsters with an incredible ability of being able to transform themselves to appear in human form on land so they could fully study what humans were like and how to harness the best power. This would be generations before Luca takes place, but as Luca shows us with all the legends in the town of the sea monsters and literal statues of sea monsters being killed, it suggests that the sea monsters from Monstropolis were tortured by the humans, which would give them a reason as to why the monsters became so scared of them. If the humans kept on killing the sea monsters, then the monsters would probably shut down the operations and close the doors before any humans could come into the monster world, and this would make the sea monsters trapped in the past, which eventually reproduced and generations later, you come to Luca. Or you could look at this in the complete opposite way. Instead of looking at the monsters creating the sea monsters, what if the sea monsters created the monsters? We've seen from the ending of Luca that gradually humans are beginning to accept these sea monsters, which could be the start of some human evolution to go... let's just say a bit wrong. If the sea monsters like Luca began reproducing with humans, eventually this could evolve into the first ever monsters on Earth. Now, you might be wondering, what about the Cars movies and Wally, which according to the Pixar theory take place just before the monsters evolved, and we know that Luca takes place before any of those films. However, it still fits. In Wally, we see the Axiom take away the humans, and while the world is abandoned, that's when the cars roam the Earth. However, Wally only shows us the first Axiom returning to Earth with only humans on it, yet it also shows us that BNL sent out many different Axioms to space. And these other axioms is how films such as Onward fit into the timeline. So what if the evolved sea monsters were just on one of these axiom ships, and by the time the axiom returned to Earth, all the humans had sort of just evolved into part monster? Then this new form of species just kept on evolving with the unhealthy humans we see from Wally, and that eventually turns into the city of Monstropolis, as we know from Monsters Inc, as they've all turned into monsters. But to finally round this all off, since we know Boo is a time traveller and uses the doors to time travel, then we could say both these theories are correct, and this further fits the whole Pixar theory together. Basically, it would go something like this. The monsters send the sea monsters back in time to study the humans. They find out that the humans are dangerous and leave the sea monsters back in the past. The sea monsters gradually begin evolving with humans, which eventually, after hundreds of years, evolves into the monsters we see from Monsters Inc. The monsters then need power, so they invent the door technology and try to harness human child scream energy by travelling back in time. 
but they're not sure how dangerous it is. So the monsters send the sea monsters back in time to study the humans and the whole cycle repeats through an endless time loop paradox, keeping the memory alive just like Boo does and that is how Luca fits into the Pixar theory. But anyway guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you think we got this right? Do you think this is how Luca fits into the Pixar theory? Do you reckon the monsters sent the sea monsters into the human world and that's where these sea monsters come from? Do you reckon that these sea monsters grew up to become the monsters themselves, just creating some really long, never-ending paradox? Do you reckon that happens? Because I honestly think this fits so, so well, especially for something as insane as the Pixar theory. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments and any other ideas as to how you think Luca might fit into the Pixar theory. And as always, we've been here on Get Your Theories. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.